Right, so in a nutshell, our, our products are, are all temporary surface protection uh, systems. They, uh, they adhere to the surface, um, which is, as you see in, in, in the presentation, is one of the main points of difference. Uh, and what it does do is it, it stops materials, spills, liquids, any damages from trades getting on, contractors getting on with their jobs on a, on a very restricted time um, frame on a very busy work site from damaging a, a finished surface. So our products in that, that they adhere to the surface uh, give uh, the safety directors of, of a job site or a GC a lot of comfort in that there's no no minimal trip hazards. Uh, they're, they're all high slip, slip rated products um, and they protect the surfaces that, as, they're, as they're due to do. A lot of other products that are in the market these days uh, will be a loose lay cover and there's, there's problems with that in, in that materials will tend to work their way in underneath, whether it's the strong wind that we've got out here blowing materials underneath that sandpaper sort of action and that's where you get what what you think is a finished surface the discovery at the end of, end of the project is uh, oh geez we've got to now go around and, and call back to a number of other GCs uh, another contractors I should say by the GC whether it, whether it be hardwood polishing concrete polishing uh, marble um, or, or a tile a tile guy And this is talk, this is a bit of a blurb about that. Material gets um, underneath it, uh, spills and stains, and they're quite often not discovered. Or if they are discovered, uh, when when these temporary uh, other temporary loose lay products are put down, um, they can get warped. Uh, the, the materials can be warped if they're wet, or have uh, some transfer through if, um, from any any liquids and whatnot. So again. Our, our systems adhere to the surface and we cover um, glass, we cover vertical surface as well as, as, well as horizontal. Um, and I'll, I'll, we'll go through those three systems now. So commercial systems are our, have been our main flagship product. They're, it's a two-part system, so it has a base coat uh, that's adhered to the surface and into that we roll in and embed a mat. What happens is that mat will uh, adhere to the surface and uh, adhere to our, our base coat which is a peel of the primer and what that has two effects. One, it holds the mat down during construction and the second is when, when it's removed the base coat comes with it so it's, it, it's bonded to the back of, of the mat. Um, another thing with our mats is that they're made from uh, recycled plastic bottles so there's a bit of a a green, green aspect to it there. It's a, a fairly, fairly simple application. You're, you're applying the base coat in front of the roll, and for those here in the room, we'll do a, a live demo after, after we're done with the, um, the PowerPoint. Uh, and then you're, you're embedding that, embedding that roll directly into that, uh, that base coat immediately. So you, what you don't want to do is have that base coat dry out any because it, it'll impinge the um, or interfere with the, the bonding of, of mat with, with the base coat. So we want it to dry into the back of the mat. Comes in three grades, light, medium and heavy. Really, really uh, simple and, and user user friendly names there. Heavy uh, is of course the, uh, the most commonly used in a commercial environment. It has uh, the most durability, the most spill and stain resistance. Uh, it has a fire retardant built into the into the surface. So more often than not, we'll find GCs bringing contractors in earlier than they normally would. So if, it, if it's a terrazzo guy or a, um, a polished concrete um, concrete polisher, and then do all the framing once once the, the surface is covered with scooter. So they can frame directly over the top of it. It can stay under the track wall. Uh, it's, it's 
fire retardant, and they just cut along the baseboard before they put the uh, uh, cut along the, the wall before they put the baseboards on. So it, it allows for especially for the polished con um, concrete polisher allows for a much cheaper uh, quote from him because he's only using his big machines in a in a in a wide open space. So he's not it's, a, it's minimal edge work uh, for, for his project. So. It, it gives the, the GC flexibility as to where you would traditionally bring trades onto the project. So it keeps materials, you know, this, this particular product, this photo here is of our heavy traffic on a, on, a, on a job site. So that's lying underneath all that dirt and debris and there's a polished concrete surface underneath that. This is the, uh, the MT. Um, again, this is this is a job uh, in Colorado. There is polished concrete underneath this surface. This was, uh, I should say, the, the heavy traffic is really the only one you want to have exterior. And, uh, and the, the reason being is that the base coat doesn't do well with um, UV rays, it, it gets degraded in that its, it's peelability is is affected by by the um, by UV rays. So the heavy traffic mat on top of it is the only one of our range that gives it the protection that it needs to um, to from from UV rays. So medium traffic will will protect it somewhat, but quite often, more often than not. Our stuff's going on before mm -hmm. the or, or larger um, or main body of walls, so uh, that's the main reason for heavy traffic. If you've got any exterior exposed, so again, the same base coat with with the, the medium mat. Again, <coughs> the medium mat is for interior use, long-term interior use. The last one is uh, the, the light traffic commercial mat. And it's short-term interior use. <coughs> this is on a um, on a project where they wanted to keep the, um, the concrete from being marred. Hey, Sorry, guys. Right, I'll um, I'll run quickly through this. Um, you guys got to speak up more. <laughs> right, where are we? Um, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, for those that are just joining us. Uh, the uh, this is a, a quick snapshot of the our commercial system. The uh, has a, a base coat which is, comes in a five-gallon pail <coughs> and a. The heavy traffic mat, which is orange, so our, all of our heavy traffic materials are, are orange for identification and for uh, high visibility in terms of job site um, safety, uh, so people know that there's something down there. So the base coat is applied to the substrate, and the heavy traffic mat is rolled out into it. And if you also, if you can't understand me due to the accent, just please um, please speak up. We've got an interpreter here. <coughs> help you out. Uh, okay, so the heavy traffic, the base coat is laid, uh, the mat is laid into the base coat while it's still wet, so when it dries it has a, a maximum bond. <coughs> Again, uh, exposure to weather is fine with the heavy traffic, interior only for the medium and the light. Uh, Selection criteria are, again, weather, the amount of construction activity, mm -hmm. and uh, the state of the slab in terms of it, how, how far cured it's gone, and the duration of cover. Hey, Brendan, what yeah. about compatibility with curing compounds? Uh, as, as long as they're, um, as long as, well, we don't have anything because 
most of our, our systems require a 14 day uh, a 14 day slab cure. So yeah, there's they they should be well and well and truly. So if there's a cure and seal down a, a film farming material, yep. that's not going to bother. No, no. Anything. If, if anything, it's going to help. Help us. Yeah, because okay. what it what it will do is it will mitigate the, the pH or the alkalinity of the surface. The the base coat not only has um, issues with um, or it can be uh, affected by uh, UV, high alkalinity, which is why we ask for the slab to be cured 14, 14 days or have a pH of under 11 or 11 or under. So. Okay. Uh, film forming uh, cures are not a problem. Uh, one point I would mention is probably uh, dissipating cures. We had a job. When was that? There was there was a a product that was supposed to um, dissipate, mm -hmm. but it dissipates over a three month period with contact with UV and traffic. Right. But of course. Covering the scudo is going to negate both of those. So um, we'll just try to remember the details of the project. And the biggest thing, even a dissipating cure applied for not applied for manufacturer's recommendation rates, where they get lazy and they just go out there and start dumping it, then we're going to have issues with that. So it's, it's, they've got to apply for the uh, application rate that is that's recommended. With the dissipating. Um, with, even with dissipating, yeah, because you just you get that film on. Uh, that it'll cure at a different rate there than everywhere else, you know, and then it's, fingers are being pointed back oh, yeah, most yeah. of the time, you know. But uh, yeah, to, to, to your point, uh, those most dissipating cures we don't have an issue with because they, they want to uh, dissipate within seven days or or fourteen days or whatever it is. But this this one that comes to mind was was a three month, and it it, it just didn't. It did not want to. It didn't dissipate because it wasn't getting right the, the treatment that it that it should have. Okay. So um, um, yeah. So the, the heavy traffic, uh, fire retardant uh, built into it on, on the surface. So okay to to do framing on top of that. Um, again, this this for those who can see before. This is the photo of uh, of the heavy traffic uh, covered in. Uh, plaster and uh, goodies that, that happen on a job site. Uh, commercial mat, uh, this, is, this is the, the medium traffic. This is polished concrete underneath this project. This was in uh, Colorado, Denver. Again, the medium traffic is, uses the same base coat, uh, but it uh, just is a different map, and the, heavy, uh, the, the light traffic is uh, interior only as well for a shorter period of time. <coughs> this is a uh, this is a short video. I hope this comes through. Um, go to meeting. We'll just check that. So we're applying the base coat in front of the mat and then pushing the mat into it and then just embedding it with a, uh, with a roller so it's seeding it. Applying the mat, uh, the base coat in front of it, the, you can see how that, the applicator spread, spread the base coat before um, he distributed it before, before trying to spread it. Is that surface power washed or just swept clean? Uh, that one was, I think that was, uh, they, had, they ran an auto scrubber over it beforehand. Yeah, it had been uh, had a had a light grind. What was that? Was a Denton job? What was that? Yeah, they they had run uh, all their metal and densified. This this is a, this is another way uh, method of application. People uh, spreading it with a squeegee and then just back rolling it with a with a heavier nap uh, roll. The base coat, everything about the base coat is getting the, the film, uh, the, the base coat applied at the correct thickness. If you go too thin, it's, it's not going to behave properly, it's not going to bond properly, and, uh, but when it's, when it's applied at the correct thickness, 
it will peel up beautifully. This is this is just a method that someone else uh, was using uh, on on a project that was quite uh, was quite quick in terms of how how fast they're getting the material down. This was a polished surface, of course, uh, and I thought it was it was good to note uh, for those people that uh, find sticking a nine-inch roller in the top of a bucket a little bit uh, too too, um, too slow. The base coat can be applied with a, a uh, sprayer, an air sprayer. So uh, we we have got um, we have plenty of experience with that. Uh, the base coat is water based, so that's something else we should mention. These current current climates at the moment, so it, it cannot be frozen. So uh, application would almost in in this sort of an environment would always uh, almost be interior. Only. Here's a, um, a video of, um, of just the, the, the base coat being removed of with the mats. You can see how the base coat uh, is, is now adhered to the back of the mat rather than the actual substrate. That that particular slab there was a test slab we did that was nine months old. Um, I just I'll just point out one thing. This particular project, uh, piece of footage is the mat being removed from a, um, a showroom floor, and you can see the, the, the dirt that the, the base coat has pulled out of the, the grout joins of the mosaic there. So it uh, it shows you that what how topical it is. It, you know, it's not penetrating. It, it just sits on the surface, and having a mirror image of the dirt on the uh, on the back of in, embedded in the base coat. So it gives a bit of a clean as well. How many days does it take for that material to adhere to your material? Uh, like if you had it only for a short period of time, you had to protect some for a short period of time, but you needed a durable surface like this. You, you, does it take, what, three days? No, no, it's hours. So it, it, it really depends upon the, uh, the humidity and the, the mat that you use. So the light traffic commercial mat will breathe uh, faster than the heavy traffic, so it will dry faster. So, and uh, I suppose another thing would it would be temperature and uh, airflow. So I'd say the maximum time that you'd look at would be uh, I want to say four to six hours for the heavy traffic. But most of the times we just we say just leave it overnight. If you're doing if we're sending out a sample kit, we'll say just leave it overnight and then peel it the next morning. For example, we've done some here, uh, which we did yesterday afternoon, and it, it's it's set up already. So it it would have been set up last night. So that's a good question. Thank you. Um, are you guys getting this video okay through go to meeting? Cool. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't finish that one. I'll just play this again just quickly. It's easy to, to peel up. Uh, it's easy if you cut it into smaller sections. And we have a, a, a mat puller that's like a carpet, carpet clamp. It uh, makes it easier to uh, to peel up, so uh, saves on the fingers and saves on whinging workers. Okay, the, the second system uh, is our, our tack mat, which is a peel and stick variety of our of our commercial mats. Uh, sorry, of our tack mats. Uh, the self stick uh, nature of it. Uh, Mitigate the need for the base coat, so it's a one-part system compared to the two-part system with the commercial system. Uh, pretty much um, indestructible in terms of what it cannot be put on. Uh, obviously, the surface must be dust-free, uh, but it doesn't have issues with uh, UV or temperature. 
Um, I've had it on our, our window for over two and a half years now uh, on the inside facing out and I can still peel it uh, without any residue on, on, that, on that surface. So it's, um, it's, a, it's quite very durable. Go over nearly any surface. Uh, it can go over, can go over carpets, which uh, our commercial system cannot, because you, if you put base coat into the carpet, you'd never get it out. Um, however, that being said, it's not uh, a, a great bond to carpet due to the, the fibrous nature and more often than not the dirt that's in there. So it negates the attack of it. But if you, if you're yeah, on a project, just reach. Carpet strip, then uh, it, it's more than enough. It com comes in two grades: a light traffic and a, a heavy traffic. The heavy traffic, the only difference really between the heavy and the light is a coating, the the uh, fire retardant coating that's that's applied to the top of the um, the mat itself. Um, that being said, the light traffic is extremely durable. We uh, it'll last about. Yeah, five to six months in our, our warehouse um, before getting all ready. Uh, the light traffic comes in a number of versions in those sample kits. You've got a, a thick grey one. That's the high impact um, darker grey. Uh, that's, that's the um, impact version. A lot of people are saying that they don't have enough um, impact resistance. So um, that's been very well received. What's the cost difference between the square foot cost difference between the peel and stick and the uh, two part system? Uh, yeah, um, there's different grades, so uh, who, we can we can get that to about twenty percent, isn't it? Yeah. About twenty. But from uh, heavy to heavy, it's about twenty twenty five percent. Heavy, heavy traffic commercial system, the two-part system versus heavy traffic tack mat is about 20-25%. But we can get you uh, raw, raw numbers from, um, from Gedeke. Uh, this just shows the versatility of, um, of the light traffic tack mat. Uh, we have, have it on the window there protecting it from uh, concrete splatter. We also have it on um, some tile, some uh, I think that's a, uh, a travertine tile, and then these these are terrazzo stairs. Running a standing water an issue on with any of the systems? Uh, Matt, if if you've got a a lot of water that's going to then seep underneath and and release the the tack, uh, then yes, that's why the tack mat is really only a an interior product. If you're going to have standing water, then the HT commercial system is going to be your bet. So uh, that's a good point. Thank you. The heavy, uh, the tack mat system is really only for interior products, projects, I should say. Uh, and if I, uh, I think there's a video at the end showing that the tack mat. So it, great, great for protecting stairs uh, and and surfaces uh, from, from traffic. Our next product is a, a glass advance. Which uh, is a, a liquid that fill, that dries as a film, so it can go on uh, on the glass as well as the uh, the mullions and the framing. Um, it can it, it has a fire retardant in it as well, so it res resists welding, grinding sparks and whatnot. Um, it can be sprayed with a with a with a roller or an airless sprayer. Um, it can it can be uh, Clear or we have, our standard is blue, um, so it's slightly frosted. But it'll, it'll take concrete, stucco, any any of that sort of matter. Big jobs, little jobs, vertical surfaces, horizontal surfaces. I think I've got, um, and this is one of this is one of your projects. I think it's the um, this is Darren Goldsmith's yeah. project. So this is this is that product in use by your customers at the moment. Can <coughs> that be spray room? Yes. Yeah. And you, you do get better rates and you get a, a much better film when it when it's sprayed. How about 
chemical resistance, uh, like hydrochlorics or hydrofluorics that are clinging in the building? Yeah, it's, 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 it's very good for that. Yeah, same with, um, what, are, what are the concrete toys used? Oh, for stabilizing? Yeah, muric, muratic acid. Muratic acid, yeah. Um, the other thing that, the only uh, limitation with the glass advance is a um, uh, acrylics. Because it's acrylic based, it, it likes acrylic based uh, other acrylic surfaces too well, so it won't peel off. So that's that's rare in, in the commercial sector. It's more acrylic based paints on some framing of, of domestic uh, windows, but uh, that's the only thing that, like plexiglass, for example, that's, that's acrylic. So if you put this on, it just wouldn't wouldn't come off. Um, there's a, a video here of uh, just showing the durability of, of, the, of the product. You know, how long does that spray on stay? Well, how long is that good for? Uh, it's, we've had it. We've had it 18 months to 20 months on on a project that I know of. That's so, waterproof. That's wa that, That's waterproof, right? Correct. Yes. So it's uh, is there some welding slag uh, being being applied to the surface here. This is the this is the clear version that they um that they're peeling. It's a very and then you know, I don't know how many jobs you 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 hear of these horror stories of people that have applied uh doing some overhead welding outside and the the embers get blown into um, onto the outside of the surface. So grinding. This is this is actually what we do at uh, World of Concrete. We'll, we'll subject something on the on our booth and on the stand. That was applied with a roller, but preferred is with a sprayer. Not preferred. Just it can be uh, big bigger projects, bigger areas. So how many mills are you trying to build up? About ten mil. About ten mil. Not, yeah, it's not that, not that thick. And again, with with the sprayer, it almost looks like it's too thin because it's so consistent. That but it's as long as you box coated, you go left, right, up, down, um, two passes. It's fine. You said on like a Canada surface, like a curved wall type of thing. Exactly right. I was trying to do it one-handed. He's standing on a uh, on a forklift. <laughs> the, the footage is not the best. Comes up like a sheet, and then the sheet just rolls up into a ball. I'd have to go back. Okay, so in summary, all of our products adhere to the surface, uh, but good for uh, a lot of different applications they give. And your uh, your customers a lot of flexibility in terms of bringing different uh, pro parts of the project on earlier than what they traditionally would, and they give the ability to protect it in the in the long term. Uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, the big, biggest thing is what we we get, and for, uh, the Getaki guys will get is uh, lots of compared to cardboard or roundboard or whatever um, is just used in a particular area. It, it it goes to a couple of things. One is they're not apples with apples. You know, you're going to get what you pay for on some projects. It might be good. Sounds good. Uh, Back. You might like the turnover or how, how, many, how often that you're maintaining it. Um, um, so 
again, it, it's of course, there's some projects you can't put it outside, but you can with the commercial HT system. So different scenarios will require different solutions. So, uh, installation times uh, for the commercial system, a two-man crew will roughly do, if they're applying it manually with the roller, they'll roughly do 5,000 square feet a day in a, in a relatively um, open surface. Uh, if you do it with a sprayer, you're going to double that. So an airless sprayer applying the base coat, you will, you will double that. Um, with the tack mat, uh, it's doubled again in terms of uh, your application. And just on that, I might bring up bring up a video of the tack mat being applied. I can find it. Tack mat. It's just step by step, but it, it doesn't go for long. But all you're doing is really, once you have alignment, all you're doing is peeling that release paper, um, and it, it'll follow you. There's some, some live footage coming up here. Yeah, they're just uh, they're just aligning the. Um, <laughs> the overlaps. Alignment, I suppose, with any rolled product is, is very important. If you're out an inch at the beginning, you're going to be out by a foot down the, down the end, depending on how long your application is. So here's, here's the application of, of the tack map. So how much does that overlap? Is that an inch or two inches? Two inches, inches. yeah, two inches. On, on, on the heavy, on the light traffic, no. On the heavy traffic, there is. They're quite, quite quick and easy to do in terms of the application. This was over a uh, boxy surface. So this, this, this grade is a little bit bigger than what we usually recommend, but they were, they were quite, quite gentle. But they, it, it did the job. What it was supposed to. Yeah, so that, that goes to the. Um, and that was an immediate turnaround, right? As soon as you peel the stick. Yeah, exactly right. right yeah. yeah. Do you all have some sort of uh, cheat sheet for like a server is out there and application you're using to get you down to the right product? Yes, yeah. Um, I've got something like that coming up. Uh, I'll just. just Quickly t touch on the the base coat residues. Uh, again, going back to the base coat, it, it's all about the applying it in the correct thickness. It, it's a film, just like any film, it needs to be applied properly to work. Uh, um, sometimes you get people being a bit spotty; they'll, they'll be very minimal in in their application. Uh, usually, you're off on the edges, and, and the, the base coat film doesn't have enough body in it to do two things. Doesn't it can't adhere to the surface and bond to the back of the mat, so it does one or the other. But usually it stays on the surface. But more often than not it's just it'll just rub off with a boot or your hand or if it's a larger area you just get a, a swing buffer just with a, a, a pad and it'll it'll just come come right off. Patching's very easy on, on all all systems. Uh, just apply it directly over the top. Um, moisture our our tack mats, our, we have two, two ranges of tack mats, the construction tack mat and the flooring tack mat. The flooring tack mat is just new for this year for us. Um, it will be released at World of Concrete. Uh, it is a, a new version because it is breathable, whereas the, the tack mats that we've had for, for a long time are not breathable. Our commercial systems are breathable, but the heavy traffic is less so than the medium and the is less so than and the, and the light. Um, so with, with those in mind, 
with the projects that are a pressure slab, make sure that you choose the right product in that. Um, you know, if there's still a lot of moisture to come out of it, maybe, and and you, it, the other qualifying criteria is of construction and degree of use and degree of construction activity. You have to take those into account, and that's to that cheat sheet you were talking about. We have that available. Brandon, is there a working time with that base coat? I mean, if you were doing a room size and you were just spraying the entire room. No, unfortunately, it. it that, that's where sometimes you get people with would say, hey, there's residue on the, the, the base coat's left on the ground. It's because they've done that. They've gone ahead too far. And by the time they get back to pushing the mat into it, it looks like it's set up. Yeah, or, or it's skinned over more, more likely than set up. Uh, having said that, if there is that, if that ever happens, you can apply new base coat over a dried base coat and they'll bond together. So it's not a full application. <coughs> this is just a, a, a type of cheat sheet as to um, different products in the market. Um, ours are the top two. They, they are top in terms of cost as well, but in terms of suitability um, and flexibility, they're across the board. They're a lot better than other things. So, uh, we have acres of, um, of data sheets and um, project profiles, videos, photos, anything of, of that nature. So uh, we also have a, um, an AIA approved architectural course. So for those architects that you know they can do this course and get some CE points. So it's a good way of leading that introduction, getting them on, getting it specced earlier on, on on projects. So we can help you with that as well. But if there's any questions, I think the only other thing left is just some um, different projects that we've done around the, around the country. Uh, this is a rail commuter station in California. Here you see the flame, that uh, bottom right photo, you can see the flame retardant at work. That column was, was welded into that, that base plate and all it did was just singe that uh, surface. So the iron workers were extremely impressed with that. This, this project was a polished concrete. Um, that brown was the old colour of our heavy traffic mats, uh, which we changed to orange. So, uh, but that's polished concrete underneath that project. So it was polished first and then all the scaffolding and, and uh, interior work was done. So that's before and after. That's you know, before and after the, the scooters removed. So the one on the left is is covered, the one on the right is not obviously. This is another example of putting framing over over the, the commercial mats. They've applied the poly past, past the uh, excuse me, past the, the corridor and then just done the framing straight over the top of it. Again, frame. Uh, this is a this is a medium traffic. This this particular project was a little bit different in that this project um, this this medium traffic map was a custom design. Uh, it was thicker and uh, it had um, a, a novel, another pass of coatings. But the, the, the GC wanted the, uh, the the yellow for the safety aspect. So <coughs> it could be in, in all. Technically, it could be a, called an HD uh, map, but it was um, it was used outside. He, uh, I don't know whether you can see properly, but the bottom left corner they're cutting through the mat. They're doing uh, some control joints that they forgot to do. So you just you can still work through the mat. Polished concrete job, terrazzo job, terrazzo job. All this concrete again. That's it. So, if there's any questions that haven't been answered or asked, 